Hi there. Today was day one of House of the Dragon Season 2's week-long filming schedule in Caceres, Spain, which is their stand-in for the streets of King's Landing. We were not disappointed. We already got spy photos on three points of information. This is the second half of my report. The first half I devoted entirely to point one, which is we got our first look at the new faction banners, that the Blacks and the Greens have their own rival heraldry, Points two and three are about blood and cheese in the Battle of Rook's Rest, which are very spoilery if you don't know what those terms are. So, ample warning, I'm going to be talking about character deaths in this. Nothing contradicts the book. It's all good news. Just, this is confirming some things. Well, to start with, what were they actually doing in Caceres? They weren't in full costume. This was a practice run for the sake of the horses that the horses were in full costume, that they were wearing armor and stuff, ceremonial armor with uh, Faith of the Seven sigils, with the Golden Dragon sigil, that was all in there. And I want to take a moment to point out, this really emphasizes, you need to take time to train horses to do things. It doesn't just happen the way you would order a person to do it. That what's the saying in Hollywood, famously, don't work with children or animals. This is a massive mistake that the amateurs, Benioff and Weiss, consistently made. That after a certain point, when you should be aware of your own ignorance and go, I should just trust what the horse wrangler tells me. Infamously, Battle of the Bastards, which was a disaster behind the scenes. It could have been a lot worse that originally they said we just want a melee pile with... Uh, stunt men fighting near the horses, or I don't think they even understood that the horses need to be trained to do stunt falls or not. They had the audacity to claim they had been researching how to do it for weeks, and it's just, when Miguel Sapochnik opened the script, he went, just reading this, I can tell this would get a horse killed. You're telling me you researched this? You hadn't, you put no effort into this, that, that we can't do that legally, endangering the animals. It's not a matter of whether I want to or not that we'd be lawsuits and everything. But on top of that, when he figured out, okay, we can make something that's near a horse charge, that if you can, with artful editing, you can make a team of 20 horses do a stage fall all at once. But he consulted with the horse wranglers, did the math, and Sapochnik called them back and said, it takes six weeks to train a horse to do a stunt fall. And they called him back and said, make it happen in two. What do you mean, train the animal in two weeks instead of six? That is how long it takes to train a horse. That's how long it's always been. For a hundred years of, of cinema. And for this went on for like six months. I don't want to hear it. So shout out to Michigan Scythian, is um, a woman who runs a horse farm in, in Michigan, who's one of the major, a comment, my, one of my regulars in my comment section, who just will back me up on this of, you don't just go, okay, let's have a big parade. It's a procession through the city, not just a lone rider. There's a couple of major processions this season, three of them. They have to train the horses on practice runs, even though it's not an action scene. It's just a big procession of a lot of horses because there's hundreds of, of, of crowds of peasants. There's lots of other horses. There's noise. Horses get spooked that you need to do a practice run to make sure they're calm. So that's what they were doing today. And it, it underscores there is necessary prep to make sure that um, are all the fire extinguishers working? Are all of the, the safety things behind it, the, the electrical wiring? Um, have you made sure that, the, that there, there's boron instead of graphite on, on the coolant rods? Like from Chernobyl, it's just... Eh, it'll take a day to train a horse to do that. What are you basing that statement on? You have no experience working with horses. So today was training the horses. That the big thing we learned was that apparently across the scale of the season, there will be three big scenes involving horses through the streets of King's Landing. Now, the, the third one is, isn't important at all. It's um, the royal carriage that we've seen since season one will be hurrying from point A to point B. There's no way to tell who's in it. It's like any of those other scenes in season one where they're like driving between the sept and the castle or the gates to send off an army. You couldn't really tell what it was. That's why I said we got three points from this. 
the third one wasn't the, the third <laughs> three and three, the, the third horse thing. The first point was the heraldry thing, which we actually did see with the horses, that it was someone on a horse carrying the banner. But there's two other processions involving horses, very large scale ones, because they're like formal state processions with knights decked out in, in full gear. First one relates to blood and cheese. Last chance to turn back if you haven't already. In retaliation for Amon killing Luke, Daemon says, eye for an eye, son for a son. And he hires assassins who sneak into the Red Keep and kill Aegon's six-year-old son. As revenge for Luke. And the assassins are known as blood and cheese because one's a rat catcher, so... Big shocking moment. It's not like our Red Wedding. It's not on the scale of the Red Wedding, but it's like on the scale of uh, Renly's assassination or something. And, you know, it's a kid they're killing. And the fallout from that. That they don't really say what happened after that in the book, but in the TV show, they're going to show that he's given a state funeral. Uh, his Aegon's oldest son, Jaehaerys, who is named after the old king, named repeat in dynasties, that Jaehaerys will have this big funeral procession, and we know this because I don't know how they got this spy photo, and I can't post spy photos in this. I'm going to put a link in the comment in the description box to Redanian Intelligence's article, the big Witcher fan site. They posted this on their website. Someone got a spy photo of a supplies box that says Jaehaerys Funeral Procession on it. I, it says, well, J-A-H Funeral, but it's... it's, it's Obviously, it's very clearly, they, I don't know how they got that lucky. He has this big state funeral procession. That wasn't in the book as such, but Fire and Blood is an outline, right? That, yeah, logically, in-universe, they would have a big funeral for a prince of the royal blood like that. And thinking on it, why would they emphasize this so much? This is speculation. I think they're showing the Greens working the propaganda angle to paint Rhaenyra as the new Maegor. That really stop to think what it's like living in a society with no TV and no newspapers. That, and this is a thing in medieval research, that big public spectacles weren't just ego. It's how people got messages across. You needed to do things to crowd, to give a message to a crowd like that. It's just a very different oral culture, tradition like that. It's not a print culture. So the best way to propagandize what happened to Jaehaerys, I mean, he's a closed casket, don't get me wrong, is to give him a big state funeral uh, to emphasize to the mob of King's Landing, to the people, they assassinated my six-year-old son. Leaving out that the Greens are the ones who drew first blood, they are the ones who killed Luke under a flag of truce. It, it, and, the, and the back and forth of this. That, and this is ingenious to me. They're trying to put their spin on it. And that you're starting to see how the history will remember Rhaenyra for all of this. Even though, from the standpoint of cold logic, if you do, both sides have to accept this. If you don't kill the other side down to the last child, their supporters will rally around even like a five-year-old as a figurehead to keep fighting to put them on the throne. Like, if Rob Stark dies, they would rally behind Rick and Stark. Any any of your enemies, even if you know, Rick and's a kid, he'd be a figurehead, but they would do that. So you have to kill the Blacks down to Rhaenyra's youngest son, Viserys the Younger, the little kid we saw meeting his uh, grandfather right before he died. And on the other way, you have to kill the Greens down to the last little girl. Uh, Jehera, the twins. Because it's going to keep going. Your supporters will keep it going. Because they know if we surrender, we're going to get executed. They're going to purge us. You have to kill them down to the last child. And it's a debate they're going to have in season two of there isn't going to be a negotiated peace. We have to. This is a thing you need to face. And it's cold logic, but it's what they're doing. And just that's such a good idea in universe that we're propagandizing. It's um sort of like that funeral procession that uh, in, in Les Miserables that, that they use as a political statement to spark off the uprising. That just in in a culture like that, like having a big state funeral procession is a major statement. It's a propaganda thing. 
which ties into point three that we found out, and this is much less speculative. Didn't actually have a spy photo of this at all, but people described it pretty well. Battle of Rook's Rest, the dragon Melis gets killed. And the book says, after the battle, they carted its severed head through the streets of King's Landing. This is a huge dragon. that They cut the head off just because they couldn't drag the whole thing back. But they parade, it's not in a Red Wedding style thing, they just display, rather than parade, the severed head of Melis through the streets to show, we just killed one of the Black's major dragons. They have three current adults that have riders. We knocked one out of the war. Look, we are winning. We are the powerful winning side. Don't get second thoughts about supporting us. And Rook's Rest happens in retaliation for Blood and Cheese. That they Aegon says, they killed my son. I immediately launch into an attack. They manage to kill Melis. But yeah, I'm working backwards here. That yeah, The Melis thing is in the book. That that's what public propaganda is like in a society with no newspapers. That they're inventing... Uh, not just, oh, there's a funeral. Like Game of Thrones, they have like a funeral for Myrcella in the Great Sept with three people. This is a giant state funeral. I mean, the scale of... There's this procession of what's like 20 to 40 knights on horseback, which they're going to digitally double up. But like in full regalia, the horses are in full regalia as, as this big state funeral, as a propaganda statement. Well, you drew first blood, you killed Luke, you, you just had to keep pushing it, and now Rainier is going to give you a war like you wouldn't believe. So that's what's pretty much going on right now. Nothing contradicts the books. This is all pretty good. The question we have, though, is we can't figure out what episodes these scenes are in. Like, okay, this is uh, Jaehaerys' funeral. Is this in episode two? I mean, it's possible Blood and Cheese might not happen until episode five out of eight. That, that's a possibility. I mean, we don't really know what order they're going in with this. The rate at which they're going. We knew Rook's Rest would be this season. If they're giving this much attention to the parading Melis's head, it's not going to be treated as an afterthought. Like the actual battle, this is the set piece of this season. Because, like I said, that Act 2 of 10 episodes could never have worked. That they took Act 2, expanded it to 16 episodes, then split it into two blocks of eight. So the Battle of the Gullet, which is this big battle, the naval battle, which uh, was originally going to end Season 2 when it was 10 episodes, that's in Season 3 now. I think the end of Season 3, but I have to admit I'm not sure, maybe they would put it at the beginning. I mean, just don't assume it's the beginning of Season 3. It could be the end, we don't know. But just of the major stopping points in the war, the big battle scenes, the climax of Season 2 now will be the Battle of Rook's Rest. Episodes 7 or 8, I would guess. But because, you know, they film out of order, they film all of the King's Landing street scenes in one week. We now have to figure out, pick apart, okay, which cinematographer is in the spy photos who is actually filming that specific scene? Which director are they tied to? Which We'd be so lucky if we got, like, a shot of, I don't know, Claire Kilner specifically filming the funeral or something, or the melee scene. And she's publicly said, I'm doing episodes two and five. So we could tie it down to the exact timeline of what the thing is. We did this in season one. It was fun, you know, picking apart, okay, I think that sussing out, this is what the season schedule is episode by episode. But it can be a little daunting, but it took us months to put that schedule together. After a lot more spy photos than this. So like I said, I can't show the spy photos here. I'll link to them when they're on other websites. I don't want to get a copyright strike. They're out there. But overall, this is pretty good. It's nice to see the heraldry. It's nice to see them respecting that you need to do a practice run with the horses before putting them in front of a crowd of hundreds of extras so they don't panic. Is filming 101, you know? Basic stuff of you can't just snap your fingers and have the horses do it. You need to train them. So that is going to happen. Uh, no word on other stuff yet, but we have six more days of filming, and they've only just gotten started. They're not even full costume. So check back frequently for this.